and I want to share with you guys a bunch of things today and end with a hot take, not by me, but by someone else. All right, so I was first alerted to this. You look here, uh, Ben Armstrong, Bitboy Crypto. Let's, he, he's saying, let's look at why he has not been arrested. Anyone else with this level of detail in terms of what they've done and how criminal it is, they'd be off to prison right away. But let's look at why. He says, Gary Gensler, head of the SEC, worked for Sam Bankman Fried's girlfriend's father. Okay, so that's one. Sam Bankman Fried's dad shaped legislation for Senator Warren. That's number two. Number three is Sam Bankman Fried was a number two donor for, uh, for Joe Biden with stolen customer funds. That's key. Okay, he didn't donate with his own funds, he used the funds on the platform and through the platform to provide this donation. And then he mentions laundered money to Ukraine for midterms as the fourth reason as to why he has not been arrested. All right, now. We go back and then he goes on to say, BitBoy was like, look, there's a push to make Sam Bankman Fried look like he made mistakes. This is really when my alarm bell started to ring for me. Uh, He's saying that this case is fraud by technology. Do not let them bury the real story. Crypto fraud, tax fraud, counterfeiting, RICO charges, tax evasion, racketeering. And he's like, retweet this because this is the most important story for crypto. And I do agree with him here that with everything that's been you know revealed and uncovered for mainstream media to go off and start to talk in a different light or provide a different perspective is ludicrous because mainstream media is the first ones they're the first ones to jump on anything even if it hasn't been proven let alone if it's transparent and you can actually see what's happening and they'll rip it to shreds but they're not doing that with him So I'm going to get to that New York Times article that everyone has been actually referencing. And BitBoy then goes on to say here, look, I told you he would do this. He meaning Sam Bankman-Fried. And he's like, mainstream media is helping with this narrative. So Sam Bankman-Fried tweets out that, look, a few weeks ago, FTX was handling $10 billion a day of volume and billions of transfers. But there was too much leverage, more than I realized. So he's playing this game of, look, I didn't even know what was happening on here and it was too late for me to stop it. He says a run on the bank, meaning everyone starts taking their 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 assets off the platform and a market crash exhausted the liquidity on the platform. It's an outright lie. Outright. So he goes to say, so what else what can what can I try to do? I try I can try and raise liquidity, make customers hold and restart. Absolute BS. Absolute BS. It's been a scam. It's been a Ponzi scheme, uh, you know, right from the get-go. And for him to come out and do this, and then for the mainstream media to pick it up and start to run with this angle, it's crazy. And I want to share this with you guys, okay? So here's a New York Times article. And just just right from the start, okay? It doesn't say fraud. It doesn't say criminal activity. All the buzzwords that you would see for anything related to the crypto space. Those are the first things that you would hear, right? What do they say? They say crypto empire collapsed. That's it. It's just what he has built or is trying to build didn't work. That's all they're saying. So that's the title. But what's underneath? What's the subtitle? Well, Mr. Bankman Freed said in an interview that he had expanded too fast and failed to see warning signs. But he he shared few details about his handling of FTX customers funds. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. You guys are paraphrasing or providing some form of what's to come and what's to come is to say that he expanded too quickly. That's that's what we're going here with. That's that's ludicrous. Okay? And I've highlighted some I'm not gonna go through everything. I'll share the in the link um, in the description below for this article. But I wanna highlight a few of those paragraphs and kind of talk about them. So look, they go on to say Mr. Bankman Free did, however, agree with critics in the crypto community who said he had expanded his business interests too quickly across a wide swath of the industry. He said his other commitments had led him to miss signs that FTX was running into trouble. Okay, wait. Crypto uh, critics in the crypto community are saying he's a fraud, saying he scammed people out of their money, he crushed projects, you know, uh, purposely. And the whole entire sordid ordeal between FTX and Alameda Research was premeditated and was orchestrated to 
provide benefit to them and rip everybody else off. It's not about them expanding too quickly. It's not, it's not about him not being able to handle that expansion. Not, not anywhere close. But this is what the article is, is pushing this narrative. They go on to quote him and say, had I been a, a bit more concentrated on what I was doing, I would have been able to do, uh, able to be more thorough. That would allow that would have allowed me to catch what was going on on the risk side. I don't I don't I don't know how much more thorough he could have been in scamming people out of their money. He was quite thorough. This is just crazy that he's saying that he's, everything's falling apart because he wasn't able to keep his you know finger on the pulse. That's it. It's it's just like a business that grew too quickly, not a business that was built to scam everybody out of their funds crazy to me that they're pushing this okay so they go on to, to highlight again that mr bank bankman fried's fall has stunned the crypto world but in recent months warning signs had emerged that his business empire was in peril and that his ambitions exceeded his grasp okay again what are they pushing here i ah, look it's just a guy who's super smart who was crazy ambitious and because of those ambitions, things fell apart. Not here's a guy that had created uh, an ecosystem built around pulling customers' funds and using them for their own gains, scamming them, not caring about the customer base one bit. All right. So look, this this is what's being pushed. It's crazy to me that they're doing this. All right. So they go on to say is as he embarked on a buying spree this year, investing in beleaguered crypto companies. So they're talking about BlockFi's and the Voyager, which these guys had a hand in creating that issue in the first place. So they were beleaguered because of FTX and Alameda Research. So he wasn't sharing information with key staff. When he was told that he was overextended and was encouraged to hire more employees, he resisted the suggestions. Again, it's not about him hiring or being overextended. Goes on to say, and in Washington, he was pushing an ambitious regulatory agenda while speaking critically about CZ, the chief, the CEO of rival exchange Binance, who eventually mobilized his extensive Twitter following to set off the run on, on FTX. Okay, so here we go. So, so we've got them saying that he's, again, they're using this word ambitious or ambition. To, to paint a picture around SBF here, okay? That this is a guy that just had a vision that was so far ahead uh, that he just got caught up with it and, and couldn't handle what was needed to get it there as opposed to this guy's just a criminal, flat out, all right? His ambitious regulatory agenda was to crush every other project and any other entity in the crypto space and only where he could have a monopoly. That was his ambitious regulatory agenda all right so they go on to then say eventually mobilized his extensive twitter following to set off the run on ftx so you got to see what they're doing here is that they said that it's a rival exchange binance and so cz being a ceo of that rival purposely started a bank run on ftx so as if ftx was fine nothing to worry about and cz just decided look you're my rival. I want to take you out. So we're going to do this bank run. But we don't, they don't talk about the fact that all this stuff was happening. CZ kind of figured everything out or found out and then pulled out. Now, CZ was the first investor into FTX. Why would they want to kill it if they were the first investor in it? All right. So we go on. Okay. So FTX and Alameda was, were closely linked. Alameda traded heavily on the FTX platform, meaning it sometimes benefited when FTX other customers lost money. A dynamic that critics called a conflict of interest. Okay. So so they're not they have not dug in at all to say what Alameda actually or what uh, Alameda actually did with FTX. Not at all. All they're saying is that since Alameda was trading on the platform, they may have put in trades that would have benefited when people lost money. Okay, so uh, if they were shorting something or doing something else, they could have benefited just from strictly a trading per, uh, perspective, right? So if, if, if I lose money as a customer on there because I'm doing some trading, 
on the flip side, Alameda is there. Alameda is there gaining from that same trade because they took the opposite position. And so that is what's bad about this whole thing. No. It's the fact that they were given money back from their investments uh, that they put into projects and then told the projects to put on the FTX and then FTX returned that venture money that they used so that they can use it for other projects. They were giving loans out. Uh, FTX was giving loans to Alameda Research. So there are so many different things happening here and it had nothing to do with just simple trading. You lose, I win. That's not what was happening. Okay, so then it goes on to say that Mr. Bankman Freed's circle of colleagues was bound by a commitment to effective altruism, a charitable movement that urges adherents to give away their wealth in efficient and logical ways. That, well, you guys are talking about effective altruism, basically doing good for others. Are you kidding me? What does that, that is the polar opposite of what these guys were doing. They were not using their wealth to assist others, individuals or entities. They were using other people's wealth to crush entities in the space and individuals in the space. Okay, so he goes, even as he kept hiring down, Mr. Bankman Freed built an ambitious philanthropic operation, invested in dozens of other crypto companies, bought stock in the trading firm Robinhood, donated to political campaigns and gave media interviews and offered Elon Musk billions of dollars to help finance the mogul's Twitter takeover. Are you guys seeing this? The spin on this? Philanthropic. Again, what's the word they're using? Ambitious. There's nothing ambitious. The only thing ambitious about this was the level of scam that these guys were performing. That was ambitious. They had ambition setting up a system that would take your wealth away from their platform and and let them do what they want that was their ambition there was nothing philanthropic about their operation they invested in dozens of other crypto companies that they crushed and then recouped their investment and spread it between the two of ftx and alameda research sure you know they donated political campaigns that's to push the regulatory narrative in their favor okay they gave media interviews so what like it's this is this is a narrative that is very disturbing and then it goes on to say that as FTX has crumbled Mr. Bankman Freed has been working constructively with regulators bankruptcy officials and the company to try to do what's best for customers like I I don't know what what these guys are on when they're writing this like are they using some medications are they smoking some stuff like I don't know I don't know what they're doing but for them to go and say that he's doing everything in his power to make it right for the customer is so far out there in terms of what is wrong that it's it's crazy that it's actually here in print forever okay they're not working construction with regulators to help the consumer they're not working with bankruptcy officials, went out anyone else to help you or me. That's not their goal. It wasn't their goal from the beginning. They wouldn't be in this position if that's how they thought. And then the final thing I want to share here is he also found other ways to occupy his time in recent days. Okay, so check this out. All right. This man has has loaned ten billion dollars of customer funds to Alameda Research. They've lost two billion in customer funds. Okay, but what are they asking him about? Like, hey, how do you how are you occupying your time in this stressful period? And he's saying that he's playing a video game called Storybook Brawl, though less than he usually does. He says it helps me unwind a bit. It clears my mind. Are you kidding me? Really? This is what we need to see. This is what you ask. This was relevant for a story. It is when you're trying to paint a picture of a guy who's just ambitious, super smart, happy-go-lucky kind of guy. Gee whiz, I didn't know this was going to happen. Super extended, and I play video games in my spare time. Like, wow. Wow. Okay, so this has been just blowing everybody away, causing a lot of stir on Twitter. Uh, I wanted to share a couple of tweets with you, and the last tweet here is that hot take that I mentioned in the beginning. And... 
here it is, is that the net result of FTX is that billions of dollars were stolen from crypto investors to give to Democrat-aligned politicians, nonprofits, and journalists. This is why there may be no prosecution. So this is going back to BitBoy saying, hey, how come this guy hasn't been arrested yet? And he outlines his things, and he mentioned one that was a lot of uh, donations being one of them. Uh, and this goes further along that track. This is not a political debate or anything like that. It's just highlighting what I see here. Uh, but he's got some interesting backing, and potentially this is why he's not being held in custody or, or what have you. But here's the hot take. And I found this so interesting because I didn't think of it. And there, if you read the comments, it's absolute fire in there in terms of people agreeing or disagreeing or even ripping the, this individual Mike Alfred, okay? But just, just from a thought experiment, if SBF is prosecuted in the U.S., he will likely flip and provide incriminating information on Tether, Bitfinex, and Binance, which is run by CZ, obviously the CEO, to the authorities in order to receive a lesser sentence. This information has the potential to demolish what remains of the, kind uh, of the crypto industry. Hold on tight. I mean, that's, that's fascinating. Uh, it, it doesn't bother me in terms of, oh my God, it's going to demolish the crypto industry. I don't think so at all. Uh, crypto is much bigger than any of these individuals or entities, but in the short term, it would definitely cause massive catastrophe if that were to happen. But super interested to hear what you guys have to say about this, what you think. Do you think he could get prosecuted? And if he does, would he cause a ripple effect into everything else?